So Boccaccio, Giovanni Boccaccio's writing comes a, a little bit later, several decades after Dante. He was very aware of Dante. He thought of Dante as a, uh, as a master. And in the Decameron, we have another version of this vernacular representation. A, he's writing in Italian. And B, rather than the, the terza rima, the three-lined um, uh, verse forms that Dante uses, Boccaccio's writing in prose. He's just writing as a storyteller would say. And that's the big distinction, right? Poetry or verse forms have a structure or a rhyme scheme or a particular order. And prose is just talk. Prose is an essay, prose is a speech or a sermon. It's language, it may be ordered, but it's ordered as a story would be. We're not looking for these um, tight little uh, language and sound games that we see in poetic forms. So, so Boccaccio is just telling stories. And we see in Boccaccio a thing that we see in many of the literatures across the globe of this time. We see this notion of creating a container in which we can hold lots and lots and lots of other stories. And this, we call this container a narrative frame, a frame, a holder for all of these narrations, all of these narratives, these little stories. And in Boccaccio's case, uh, the case is the plague. So 10 characters have fleed. They've left Florence because of the plague and they're out in the country someplace at a beautiful manner. There's seven women and three men and they're hanging out. And they're away from their families. They're away from their responsibilities. They're away from their immediate friends. They're not particularly um, close. They just got out any way that they could. Like strangers might meet on a bus or strangers might meet on a, at a road hotel. And they are hanging out. They got 10 days. And what do you do when you're hanging out from where everything's happening for 10 days? Well, you tell each other stories. And so that is the, the narrative frame is we've got 10 people and 10 days and everybody has to tell a story so that we can pass the time and get through this. Uh, each day, one of the characters is, 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 is called king or queen for the day. And that king or queen gets to pick the topic. Hey, everybody, you got to tell a story about men and women. You've got to tell a story about trickery. Or, so each day has a different theme that's set out by the king or queen. And then everybody's got to come up with a story that addresses that theme. That's, that's the narrative frame. In actuality, Boccaccio was stealing stories from all over. Uh, folk tales, tales that had been about, tales that had shown up, but he's re absolutely recycling tales from all kinds of other contexts and throwing them into this, um, this structure, this 10 by 10 structure, so that they can be included. And in fact, but many of Boccaccio's listeners or readers would be well familiar with some of these stories. They would know some of them. Dante recycled tons of stories too. But what's original to Dante is this trip through the afterlife, through, through hell and purgatory and heaven. What's original to Boccaccio is setting, embedding, or organizing all of these tales within this narrative frame of a, um, of a uh, not of a quarantine, of a, um, of escape, escape from the pandemic. So... Uh, as you're looking at, they're both huge pieces, and I'm going to ask you this week to focus on the, uh, the Decameron, uh, the 10 Days, Boccaccio's Decameron, and I'm also going to talk a little bit, you'll see in the, in the course content, some strategies for dealing with huge stuff. I mean, that's been a theme throughout this semester. Uh, there's a lot that can be 
gained from a piece of world literature without thorough absorption of it. We can, we can look strategically, we can read tactically to get a sense of what's going on in ways that we can positively respond. But since the Decameron is, uh, is an example of vernacular literature and of real life, I'm gonna also ask us in our scholarly notebooks this week and especially in discussion boards to, to make connections between the world of the 14th century plague and our very real lives now of surviving uh, through the COVID pandemic. It's a, it's a really interesting way of engaging with history is to think about both how it is and is not like what we're going through now and how we might uh, respond in similar and somehow different ways. So I think I think you'll enjoy it. I'm also going to encourage you. Uh, we'll be looking at, at little bits of the of of the Decameron and translation, but I'm also going to add, really encourage you to use um, overview overview resources. I mean it. Uh, uh, sure. Absolutely look at the Wikipedia page to get a quick little overview. Absolutely uh, use the resources at Brown um, to help us get a sense of the names of the places so that we have some kind of uh, overview context that can help us dive in in a smart and strategic way. I'm going to ask you guys to look at um, uh, particular characters to think of yourself as a character in our own pandemic and and uh, and also we'll be concocting some interesting assignments uh, that will give you a chance to just demonstrate your understanding of the reading uh, and inappropriate responses. So I think it's going to be a blast. So uh, uh, see you uh, see you in a bit.